<laughs> no, spooky. That is the spooky Yo. music. Holy shit. Oh, not farting anymore. I can turn my music back on. You can. No, this is demon battle. And? We're not battling a demon. Aren't you? No. Okay. We're still in the merchants. Or not the merchants. We're still in the mayor's office, right? Yes. We're in the mayor's that office. Everyone except you and me, Ben, saw the blood. We don't know it's there. And mm -hmm. I was like, what's on the desk? There's nothing on the desk. And I asked to search in the drawers. And then Dan was like, now nah, we're going to stop. Mm -hmm. So what's in the, what's forgot, in the drawers? I, I forgot exactly at what point we stopped. Yeah, drawers. Yeah, wow. If we're beginning to play anyway. What's in the drawers? What's in those drawers, huh? Yeah. Hey guys, where did I write that down? You had it tattooed on the reverse of your left thigh. The reverse of my left? You mean the inside? No, no, I mean the posterior. Am I gonna have to play myself and turn it inside out? <laughs> no, my god. My god. I was really into that secrecy. Alright, so... What's the first thing you did? I'm as convoluted. I honestly yeah. don't remember. Is are you being meta or you just don't remember? Honestly, I don't. <laughs> okay. The last session ended when we read the journal entries, and then right. it ended. Oh. Um, and then we're like, oh shit, what's real and what's not? And then we, uh, I forget exactly what we all, we just faffed around a lot. We just kind of wandered around places, little. Shit, little, little Lily, not little, little shit Lily. Little shit, no. <laughs> little shit. Yeah, that's oh, not okay. She's not a little. All right, she is not. She is not a little shit. She's been... went through the archives, went to the mayor's office. Okay, very cool. And you are searching the mayor's office, and you want to search his drawers. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, we're gonna search his drawers. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, just dig all up in that boy's drawers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I regret to inform you that I did not actually type out what I intended to type out. So I'll tell you, I completely forgot to do the thing. Um, so I'll just tell you that you, uh, you open up the drawers and a lot of it is, is nothing. Uh, you page through and it just looks like some basic, you know, business kind of stuff. Um, but you find something that's, I guess, kind of similar to it, kind of a, a, a personal record. It's it's more like a, a like a business journal, like his his feelings on his his uh, what business dealings and whatnot. And uh, the most recent entry details a meeting with a let's see with six people uh one of them is the uh one one name you recognize to be ronald <laughs> ronald your boy from the inn uh and it is very vague but it says that uh they are the only ones that recognize anything is going on and they're going to take care of it. Oh. Um, they're going to, they say, the, the last line is, we're going to dig this bastard up. <gasps> it is in the ground. Also, I just now remembered, did we mention that in the log one of the last entries was Ronald. That's the, right. That's the one right. we found downstairs. Mm -hmm. So this must be why. Anyways, mm. I will tell the people of this revelation. But he doesn't seem to remember. He would have told us that it's in the ground, right? 
Uh, well, yes, I suppose it could be that he doesn't remember. I don't think he would purposefully withhold information with us, or from us. Unless he's the monster. Do you think he's the monster? Well, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. <sighs> if he has lived this long through this disaster, and such a prominent figure he is, I can't say I haven't had the thought myself that he could have something to do with the flourishing of this problem. <laughs> Maybe he, that he could be the monster or some part of it. You said thought. Uh, I did. It's true. <laughs> that's, that's me. That's very funny. I thought, what the fuck are you doing? I'm, I'm sorry. Why? Have you learned, if, if, like, have you tried to learn how to joke? Because, I mean, I appreciate your, <clears throat> let me phrase this. I appreciate your attempts at practice around us, your well-known compatriots. However, you do need to work on it more. Well, I, you know. <laughs> Fucking wrecked. I, you I, broke, I, you broke character. It, it's, it's done with me. I'm sorry, sir. I, I lived in a temple all my life, so I suppose, you know. It, it's, it's it's fine. Okay. For, forget I said anything. It, it's it, it's okay, friend. You can try more jokes in the future. While they're having well, this Lord conversation, Lord knows I have to try. While they're having this conversation, I want to look at the blood. Okay. You. What are you? You. What are you investigating the blood? Yeah. You may investigate the blood. I think you should taste it. No. What does it taste like? Does it taste? That's part of the investigation. Him. All right. So, what are you trying to glean from the blood? How old the blood is? I think we already can tell just by looking at it that's going out the window. But I'm trying to see like. Is you it could not dry? actually tell last time. You rolled like, really badly. Yeah. Oh, uh, I couldn't remember if I did or not. Yeah. Yeah, you did. So I, then... I can't let you just do that again. But... Okay, yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. I'm just establishing that I'm very focused on this blood, even though they can't see it. <laughs> um. So don't forget that it's quite dark in here now, too, right? Hmm. Um, oh. you, you guys ate dinner, correct? Dinner. We had dinner. an early dinner, right? We yeah, did. you had an early dinner. Um, and it's a, a gray, cloudy day, so when the sun's going down, it's going down pretty, pretty quick. It's getting dark pretty quick. So that probably doesn't help with your investigations either. Um, while they're like, because the, those two, they don't notice, right? The blood. No, we, right. didn't, we didn't see it. Yeah, we cannot see it. I want to do a kind of experiment. Um, I'm going to put some magic into Alexander and see if he can see the blood. <gasps> Let him take over. Wait, wait, hold up, hold up. Wait. Alexander's still with us? Yeah. Yes. in the crystal. That's true. I completely forgot about this. So you are um, uh, putting a a level one spell slots worth of magic into this thing. Yeah. Okay. And uh, are you like putting it on first, or just holding it? Um, I'll put it on so it doesn't drop it. Okay. You put on the 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 pendant, and you die instantly. You put that, uh, uh, you check off the spell slot is what I'm trying to say. Oh, um, yeah. and, uh, I'm assuming this is a, a willing situation. Yep. Okay. Um, you put that magic into the pendant and you immediately feel it coming out the other side, basically, but it's no longer yours. It's 
very different. You start to feel your senses kind of pulling away from your body, but pulling, pulling deeper into your body. And it's a terrifying sensation, but to an extent, you've prepared yourself for this. Uh, and you know what's coming, and you just let it happen. And things fade to blackness for you. Cool. And uh, everyone else, you watch as Lena starts to focus in on this pendant. Did you explain what you were doing? Or no, did you just do it? While they're having a conversation about jokes. Okay, so you just went ahead and did that. So no. <laughs> you two are having a conversation and uh, uh, Nell and Gerald are, are kind of looking around as well. And uh, Lena just sort of like, you know, puts on a necklace and uh, collapses to the ground. Oh. Um, hello? This is the most convenient time for that to happen. I think that's... I, tr I trust she knows what she's doing. I'm going to do a medicine check. Okay, go do a medicine check on her. Oh, boy. <laughs> Bop she's looks up and says, dead. She's dead! <laughs> she, she's, she's dead! And her eyes open. What? Uh, oh. Uh, she looks up at you, thought, and then uh, looks around the room, sort of like frantically in, in confusion, and says... Uh, Hello, hello, sir. Uh, hello. What what happened? You you fainted, it seems. Thought it's me, Alexander. It's me. What? Um, I I look down. What's going Do on? I see the the amulet. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't I don't know. I'm not sure. Did she do this on purpose or? I I don't I don't who's she? And he kind of like looks down and oh sorry and um recognizes the the clothes. Oh my goodness, is this am I? Oh he, dear. Yes. Um, should I? He like kind of like pulls at the pencil. So should I? Uh, um. Well, take it take it off. No, no, I don't I don't think so. Uh, was she wearing it before? Did anyone see? What? Was Gerald it... and Nell just kind of look at each other and shrug. Um, okay. Well. They seem, by the way, extremely confused and concerned. You know, I, I suppose it wouldn't be all that terrible for you to hang out with us for a little while. Uh, you're here, after all. We may as well... Uh, we may as well I, uh, enjoy it. I look at Gerald Nell and say this kind of thing happens all the time. All the time. Um, huh? Lena stands up off the ground and sort of um, comes shakily to her feet and, and brushes her, her uh, knees off and looks at Gerald and Nell and uh, smiles very wide and holds out a hand and says, Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Alexander. And they look at each other, and they look at uh, Thought and at Nefmir, and say, "Hello." Uh, Nell, I think Nell um, is the closest. She takes uh, Lena's hand and says, "Hello, Alexander. Um, have we?" met and Alexander says no this is our first time meeting I think that's right and uh Gerald kind of you know leans around Nell and says what the fuck um, is she okay yes she's fine uh, but for the moment um Alexander is well, uh, p possessing her b 
body, I, I suppose. I don't know. Something like that. Possessing her body? What is this, a demon? No, no, he's he not a demon. He starts out. No, no, he's not, he's not a demon. It's fine. Uh, what kind of magic is this? Well, I, I'm not exactly sure. I, I think... Uh, uh, You're not sure? Well, I'm not exactly an expert in magic. I'm not a wizard. Is it the pendant? And he starts stepping forward to take, uh, to reach for the pendant. It is, but if you remove that, then he'll be gone. So please don't. He hesitates. Because I think... I, I should like a slightly better explanation, but given that we are in the situation we are in. He turns to Lena and says, I am Gerald, Paladin of the Silver Flame. Pleasure to meet you, Alexander. And Lena turns to him and says, a a a Pleasure to meet you, sir. And turns back to Thought and says, Why... Did she put on the pendant? What's going on? Where are we? I uh, honestly have no idea. But, um, anyways, we are in, uh... What the hell is the name of this town? <laughs> Haven. Haven. We are in, uh, Haven. It's a fair bit north of Crossroad. And, uh... Well, some very strange things have been going on. I don't know. Maybe she thought you could help somehow. And Lena's uh, brow kind of furrows, and she starts to look around the room. As strange things, like like what? And his eyes pass over the blood, and he does not seem to notice. Well, it is, people in this town are—they have trouble remembering things. It seems there's certain things that have been. Well, it's almost like it's been erased from their minds. And, uh, oh. well, it's been happening to us as well. Oh, never mind. Uh, he, uh, as he, he's looking around and you explain this to him, his eyes land on the blood on the ground and say, and he, his, or her eyes, uh, widen suddenly and says, Oh, oh goodness, is someone, is someone hurt? Right now? No, we're all fine. Where did all of this blood come from? I don't know what you're talking about. He. She. I'm just gonna start saying he. That's fine. <laughs> uh, he pauses and says, but the blood on the ground, there's so much of it. And he, he points at the ground. I mean, I'm, I'm actively ignoring this at this point still, right? Correct. Okay. Anyways, uh, yes, it, uh, these strange things have been happening, and uh, like I said, it's been happening to us as well. Um, so we don't remember some things that have happened, but uh, it seems there's some foul creature around here. And Well, like I said, I, I don't know what she thought, but uh, maybe she figured you could help somehow, so... Well, he's he continues while you're talking. He's he seems to be looking around the the room for more blood, and he starts looking at at um, everyone there. And then he starts holding out Lena's arms and and looking for for blood. Kind of pulls up the the sleeves, and then he pulls the collar out and looks down. And then he his head snaps up, and and his <laughs> his face goes red. <laughs> and he says, "I, uh, hmm." Okay, um, did she want my help with something? Uh, I, I really don't know. She didn't say anything. All of a sudden, she was on the ground. He starts to look around the room. He looks out the window, turns back and says, I don't know what I can do to help, but I'm happy to help. Okay. Hmm. Why are we tied together? 
Oh, right. Um, well, you see, people in town have been disappearing. So we wanted to stay together so that we wouldn't, you know, suddenly not be around anymore. You see, we apparently had spoken to another paladin, but, well, he's gone. We only found out because we read his journal and realized that he had been talking to us all night. So, well, what were to happen if suddenly I forgot Nefmir existed and then all of a sudden he's gone? So we thought maybe if we tied ourselves together that maybe it wouldn't happen. I don't know. It's the best chance we've got right now. So how do you know? How do you know that they're disappearing if you don't remember them? Well, the journal. That's sort of how we figured it out anyways. Looks down and he kind of cups his chin with his with his thumb and and finger and is deep in thought. Oh, no, he can't be. <laughs> and starts kind of mumbling to himself. But you don't remember until you read about it and now you remember? Well, we still don't remember ever talking to this gentleman, but it's clearly written out that he spoke to us. Uh, you know, it's got things written in it that we there's, there's no other explanation for it, really. He looks up and says, but if this was some kind of magic preventing your your memories from taking hold in your in your brains, then it would normally prevent recognition as well. Oh? This is different. This doesn't feel like a memory-altering spell. This is something a little different. This is... I'm sorry, I'm not sure, but it's something very different. Oh. Well, maybe that's why Elena decided to bring you back to us for a moment. You do know a lot about magic. I do. Kind of. Well, anyways, um... We also have reason to believe that there is a creature involved and that perhaps it is what's doing this to us. We have yet to creature. see it, though. Well, I don't know. Maybe a creature, maybe a... person or something else. I don't know. But something that is... alive or undead, perhaps. There's something around in here. I... It, it would seem, there seem to be signs of that. And, of course, in the journal it said, It ate him in front of me. So... You watch that, uh, the remnants of that blush on his face from earlier drain immediately. Eat? He ate him? Oh, goodness. That's what the journal said, so I don't know. I... Let me see. Just on the off chance. He says, I... I can think of no creature that would... eat and alter the memories. The suggestion being that the things that it eats are wiped from memory. Is that what you mean? Oh, um... I had not considered that. So I, I mean, I could be I could be wrong, but that seems to be... I'm sorry, I thought that's what you were implying. No, that, that certainly could be it. I just had not considered that uh, sequence of events. Wow, that's, that's quite terrifying to think about. I will continue to give this some thought. Um... He looks around the room and says, it's very dark in here, and I'm suddenly feeling very scared. Um. Oh, uh, right. Can we go? Uh, sure. I, I suppose. Um, has anyone else see anything of use in this room? How's Lily doing? Lily is just sort of taking it in. Um, she seems vaguely overwhelmed. <laughs> by this conversation. 
I didn't find anything else in the drawers, right? Of use, Correct. of note. Yeah. Okay. And there's nothing else in the room except for this desk, right? I mean, there's some chairs and there's a, a table on the far side for meetings with guests, that sort of thing. And there's some comfy chairs around that and house plants that are largely dead. Oh. You go out the door. Okay. And you just make your way downstairs and outside, or are you stopping anywhere along well, the way? Well, I'm not sure if we saw everything that was upstairs. As I understand it, there were two wings, right? Correct. What was it? Those, oh, the other side was a larger meeting room, like a long table with many chairs. Oh, okay. I don't think we searched it, though. I, I will suggest that we go do that. Alexander says, I'm, I suppose that would be um, smart. Sure. Okay. And he's shaking a little bit. He's just a little boy. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be fine. We're all tied together after all. Okay. So you go on in there. Uh, what are you going to do in there? Okay. So you said there was just like a bunch of tables or whatever. There's one long table and... A uh, number of chairs around it. Is there anything? And then on? there are some more. There are a couple uh, nice plants in there that are also dying. Anything on the table? Uh, there's there are no items on the table. Any? Nothing that you can just look at the table and see. Oh, okay. So no paper. No, no. Okay. Is there anything under the table? Why don't, would you like to investigate the table? I would like to investigate the table. All right, go ahead and investigate. Anyone who would like to investigate the table, go ahead. Um, I will... Uh, Alexander will join you in investigating the table as well. Okay. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Nefmir is still tired. <laughs> I forgot. Um, you all kind of wander aimlessly around this table, I guess, in sort of a I guess we should investigate the table kind of idea, but not really sure. Like, there's nothing on it. There's nothing underneath it. So it's sort of like a just a, a once over. Just confirming, no, nope, nothing on it, nothing under it, good to go. And uh, uh, during that time, Alexander starts to uh, look at the table itself and something catches his eye and he kind of leans down toward it. And you hear him say, well, that's disconcerting. Huh? What is it? He he looks up and motions for you to come over, and he points at uh, the area of the table uh, that is in uh, that is in front of one of the chairs, and uh, it's difficult to see in the the lighting, but there is a definite word that has been scratched into the table. <gasps> and it just says, staring. And he, he looks up and says, this is very creepy. Um, oh, yes, very much so. Uh, sorry about that. It's okay, I guess. Um... Okay, why is this a clue? Um, is this is this something? I don't I don't know. It could be, I guess. Uh, the journal also would... said. Um, I th think it said mirror black eyes. Do you have the journal with you? Um, I I think so. I don't. I, I don't remember who has it though. Does Lena have it? Maybe. I believe. I believe the journal also made reference to the fact that it was watching us. 
I think she might have it because she was writing in it earlier. Yeah, I, I'm pretty That's sure right, she yeah. has it. Um, I think you he... have it actually. Well, not you, but you know. Oh, he he says, "Oh," and kind of notices the the bag um, that he is holding, um, and starts to rustle through it and says, uh, "It's." Very dark. Um, I can't really... I think this is probably a journal, but I can't really see very well. Can we leave? Um, Can we leave? Well, you know, actually, I, I do have a candle. I, I, I could light that. I suppose. He just kind of... You hear a, a very shaky sigh. Kind of, okay. <laughs> That's fine. Yes, please. Um, the candle <laughs> would be would be fine. Okay. I light the candle. <laughs> it's dark outside too. I don't know why he's so. Yeah, but I I light it. It's lit now. Okay. You light it, and there's a a soft glow of light in the room now. Um. And it's. You know, it's it's got a, a comforting effect and you you see even Gerald and Nell, they everyone kind of leans in close to get closer to this source of light because it's the most comforting thing in the room. Uh and uh Alexander takes the candle from you and uh, sets it down on the table and he, not by the the scratched word kind of slides it down a little bit and uh, sits down in a, a neighboring chair and he starts paging through this journal and just by looking you would never even imagine that he was reading this he's turning the pages so quickly but he's nodding with understanding and he's he's taking in this book so quickly and he gets to the last few entries and he slows down uh a bit and he finishes and he closes the book and he looks up at you and says this is very scary yes it is. So you have no memory of... And he kind of hesitates a moment and uh, opens the book back up and says, uh, Elidas, uh, Ishran, Devon, Elandre... You have no memory, and he looks at the other two uh, silver flame pallets and says, "You have no memory of, of these people." And the two of them, kind of, quietly shake their heads. Okay. You certainly um, do not. I guess if I could make one observation. Um, especially toward the end of these journal entries, it seems as though things are being written by the author that he does not intend to write. Does that seem accurate to you? Uh, yes. That, that sounds about right. Um, or maybe you know, he doesn't he remember. Got, or like he's trying... It's like he's... It's like the author is trying to correct things that he wrote before. But whether or not those corrections are true or if the original entries are true, I, I really can't tell. It feels as though... Some part of the author's mind remembers, while oh. the conscious part does not. 
And that would also be fairly different from a memory altering spell. They the memory altering spells are very uh the ones that I I'm aware of are very accurate and specific. They they are surgical. They remove and there's nothing remaining. And this seems different from that. I have never seen anything quite like this before. Okay. I'm going to look around to see if anything is watching us. Okay. Uh, where are you looking? Just anywhere? Well, if we're all kind of huddled in a in the in one spot, whatever is watching us would be not there. It would be behind us. Okay. So um I'll specifically say by the way that um this uh that he moved to the other side of the table uh to avoid that scratched area. Uh-huh. So uh where the the scratched word is uh, on the side of the room closest to the doors, you are now all standing uh, closer to the windows. So, is there a place you would like to be looking? I guess out the window. Okay. Uh, why don't you give me a perception check? Okay. Why don't you give me a wisdom saving throw? Oh. But you turn around to, you know, maybe you get the, the feeling that you're being watched. You know, there's you've been hearing a lot about staring and eyes and things like that. Uh, so you turn around to take a look around. Um, let me see. Uh, let's see. And you, you turn to the window and you find yourself face to face with a creature. Its skin is a pale and sickly white and it's wrapped tight around a vaguely humanoid skull complete with black sunken eyes, what could be called a nose, and a massive mouth filled with flat humanoid teeth and god those teeth each one roughly the size of a shield and its mouth hangs open as it stares at you and I stab it it's on the other side of the window yeah can I stab through the window <laughs> You may stab through the window. Okay, I'd like Aren't to you? do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, do an attack roll. Uh, oh, right. Um, and a con save. <laughs> right. I, well, we'll do that first, I guess. All right. <laughs> Good for you. We're okay. We did it. Holy shit. Hey, oh. look at you getting your opposites. Uh, for that... Yeah, I mean, you, you smash through the window <laughs> and go ahead and roll damage. Could have been better. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but for all it's worth, you smash through that window and you stab straight into this thing's face. And suddenly that eerie silence is gone and it's replaced with a shriek wow an inhuman terrifyingly bone gratingly shrill shriek of pain and rage and now everyone else sees and hears this what do you do me or the rest of them A everyone um, like, oh. did I actually stab it in the face? You stabbed it in the face. 
Oh, I was expecting it to be like inside the mirror or something. Nope, you broke through the window and taking a closer look, you see a long neck extending down from this oh, head. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. If you'll remember, you are on the second floor. Yeah, I thought it was maybe floating. So, okay, with, I've, I'm going to try to cut its neck then, I guess. Okay. I don't know if I could do that, but... Um, everyone can go ahead and uh, just do whatever they would like right now. Um, I think Alexander's contribution is going to be to scream uh -huh. and climb onto the table. <laughs> yep, very good. Um, I don't suppose Alexander can use my magic. But would he? I, I, I assume that he could if he wanted to. I'm completely blacked out, right? Like, I have you no... You are gone. Okay. I mean, if you'd like, you could try rolling a wisdom saving throw right now. If I'm completely blacked out, though, there's no reason for me to know that I would need... No, but I would like you to do it anyway. Okay. You're a magical creature of destiny, so you can <laughs> do that. Magical creature of destiny? That's you. No, it's... You are, like, the... The next... Whatever her name is. Leatrice. Leatrice? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, nothing happens. Um, <laughs> but nice crunches, though. Yeah. And uh, so, Thought, you're going to try to attack its neck. You can do that. Um, Nefmir, would you like to do anything? Um, Nefmir is kind of incredibly shaken, um, but just kind of reflexively... I mean, he see, you know, he's not ready to, like, begin balancing whether or not this thing's worth attacking or not. He's seen it, and he's just kind of going to reflexively toss an Eldritch Blast the face's way. Okay. You guys can all roll your attacks. What's Lily going to do? Uh, Lily is... She's gonna not sure that it. she'll be able to. Um, you shouldn't have disadvantage on uh, attacks. Yes, right. attacks are fine. So I'll take that 23. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. It's just skill um, check at our disadvantage. So yeah, I'll take I that see. first 23 there. That's too bad. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Um, uh, that Both of those hit, yes. So the sword can do damage as well. Also, um, I, it's so a the, 1d8, so I only do up to 8 plus it's true. 4. Plus, etc. Yeah. Oh. Um, not very good then. So the situation here is um, it's outside of the window. Pretty much the only physical attacks that can reach it are ones that are directly in front of it, like Thought just did. Um, then there's the ranged attack from Nefmir. I Pearl think. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Panic. Sure. Panic. Yeah. I'll say that uh, Lily. Uh, screams in in surprise and disgust and picks up one of these heavy ornate chairs and launches it through the window <laughs> wow also i just realized and... because that was a crit i got savage attack and it rolled a one oh. that's uh, why it's so oh. low <laughs> I mean, uh, that's no, that's the normal crit. You sh if you have savage attack, you should have another one on top of that. Actually, I thought it was automatically adding it. I guess it's not doing. It's not that. doing it. Okay, it should be three. Okay, do another D eight. Um, let me just look at this. Eight damage plus eight damage, sixteen plus at twenty one, and then whatever your D eight is. Uh, Lily almost net. Oh, okay. Twenty wow. that chair. <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> Um, so a normal crit rolls an extra die? Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. So I gotta do another one. Okay. Um, a lot of the uh, uh, momentum of that chair is, you know, taken out by smashing through that window, uh, but it does bonk into the side of this thing's head as well. Um, as Thought then goes for the neck, and Nefmir instinctively launches 
um, an Eldritch Blast. And you can do another Eldritch Blast. You shoot two at a time. Forgot about that. Thank you. You're welcome. That hits as well. Wow. Okay. Suddenly this thing starts taking hits and uh, losing, you know, losing blood. And it's shrieking and shrieking. And it looks back at you and its mouth closes and then it opens again and you find yourself standing in this room holding your weapons fuck but why are you holding your weapons do I see anything on the blade uh, you look at the blade, roll a wisdom saving throw with advantage. <gasps> advantage? Watch me. Do oh, Okay, all right, all right. You see a strange black ichor running down your blade. Do I even know what that is? No. Um... Uh... What what is what is this? Is, As you look ooh, around, you see, you see, um, Gerald and Nell. They have their swords drawn, and and Lily is panting, and uh, uh, on top of the table. Is, yeah, Alexander is is hunched on top of the table, and everyone is looking around at each other in confusion. Um. Were we were we fighting? I'm going to say everyone can roll a wisdom saving throw with advantage. Everyone. Me again? You again, yes. Oh. <laughs> Even though I'm tired. Uh yours would be a straight wisdom saving throw. Right, let me re-roll then. I I'll just take the first one. You're good. Claim. Okay. Uh, and I'll do that for these guys too. Okay. Um. Nefmir and oh, I need to do it for him too. Okay. Uh, Nefmir. I'll say this, everyone except for Thought and Lily, you make an instinctual connection that you're all standing here with your weapons out. You feel your hearts racing. You feel the adrenaline coursing through your veins. Uh, you can make the connection that something just happened and you don't know what it was you have no memory of it but you can push back against this fog in your brain and understand that you had some kind of encounter that you do not remember but unfortunately thought and lily do not make that connection even thought looking at the ichor running down his blade has no inkling as to why that would be there. This is pretty gross. Um I'm gonna look at the ceiling. Like did it did it drip down? There's nothing on the ceiling. Um so I'm I'm aware that something happened, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um I am going to I mean, I'm I'm seeing the stuff all over uh, Thought's blade, and I'm mm -hmm. seeing his confusion. I'm going to do an Arcana check on that black anchor. Okay. Um, with a ten, you examine his blade and the ichor running down it, and you feel. It, you're you're still a bit shaken. You're it's hard to concentrate. You get you you feel the uh, the magic that you're used to from 
uh, the blade itself, you feel all those horses in there just a little bit. Um, and when you are just a little bit able to tune in on whatever is on that sword, the only thing that you walk away from is that it is not from here. It is not natural, and it is not magical. It is something, it is physical, and it is not correct. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh my god, dude. I'm gonna ask Merglocker if he knows what it is. Okay. He's magic. Uh. Yeah, did you roll for Merglocker? He did not. Um. You kind of tune in on, on Merglocker, and he's sitting on your shoulder and sort of like over to like look up at you uh. and uh the only thing the only emotion you get from him is confusion uh. okay uh. um i think alexander sort of uh gets off the table and says um I recommend that we move away from the windows. Uh, oh. I look over at the window. Do I notice the condition of it? I'll do a separate one. Why don't you roll a regular... <clears throat> well, yeah. Well, you broke that window. How about a wisdom saving throw with advantage again? Oh. Not very good. You... It, it doesn't really it doesn't trigger anything in your memory you look at the windows and you see mm, broken window and you don't care oh okay so I feel no need to move away from it no okay I'm gonna look out at the ground to see if there's like anyone attacking from from below uh, do a perception check. Do a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> oh, shit. You look down and you see a long, thick, pale skinned neck extending down uh, out of sight. I should say it goes down and then off to the side. Can I do I see where it ends? Where it ends which direction? On the ground. No, it goes around the side of the building. Oh god, this is disgusting. Okay. Um <laughs> I I look up to see what's at the other end. You see higher than before. It has moved away and moved up, and it is looking down at you. And its mouth is open, and now you can hear it. It's making a sound. And it's... You struggle to comprehend what, how you could even describe it, as the DM struggles to comprehend how to even describe it. <laughs> and it's the closest thing that the first thing that pops into your head is it's singing but you quickly shake that out like this is not a song this is not music this is nothing and as you kind of focus in on that that singing you feel yourself starting to slip away again. Uh, do another wisdom saving throw. Uh, 
I'm going to say that you no longer comprehend this thing's existence. You are no longer aware that it is there, but now you start to feel like something has happened. Now you're sort of on the same page as uh, the others that you feel your your adrenaline just really blasting through you. Your heart is hammering in your chest and you're still holding this sword with the black ichor on it and you have no idea why, but now you are starting to get the feeling that something might have just happened. Uh. Okay. Um, I'm going to retreat from the window with the others. Okay. Um, yeah, Alexander is uh, rolling off the table awkwardly on the other side. Um, and everyone else... Oh, no, he's not. He's roped to you guys. So he's coming down on to, off the table uh, with on your side, and then you all start to file out of the room, uh, single file by rope, uh, and you just go into the hallway? Yeah, well, since we've explored both wings now, I guess we're good. we're just going to leave. Okay. Unless there was anything else to do up here. It's up to you guys. I don't know if y'all remember something. I don't, but I don't think there was anything else to look at. I don't remember anything in particular. Okay. I, I don't have any interest in exploring the rest of the building. Then we shall go downstairs. Okay. Um, you file outside and or you file downstairs and where do you go from here? I think we explore everything on the bottom floor. So I would guess we would probably just leave. Okay. Is everyone good with leaving? Where are you going once you leave? Honestly, I have no idea. Um, um again, just to <laughs> just to refresh here, you now know that something did happen. You you all feel this except for Lily. You right. all feel like something has happened. You do not feel like you are alone. And just to open it up a little bit to move outside the narrative for you to make this clear, um, what I'm saying is you can make the connection now that something probably just happened and it was erased from your memory like everything else that has been happening. Okay. Well, we don't know anything about the nature of the thing that happened. We only know... Correct. There you know, has been you an are aware for the first time. Yeah, for the first time that something has happened and been erased from your memory, for the first time, you are now aware that something has happened. Okay, so, um, as we're as we're outside, um, I'll be completely honest. Nefer is getting a little bit. I mean, he's getting a little bit. He has been, but he's getting really kind of effing paranoid now. Um, and his eyes are just kind of darting like left right like up down it's kind of all over the place um okay. and you know kind of with that in mind he's you know making what i guess would be perception checks yes you can roll a perception check okay um why don't you roll a wisdom saving throw Yeah, you're yeah. looking all over, and you, I mean, you, you are feeling like you are being watched, you are paranoid, uh, and you don't see anything, though. So that's good. This might be a stupid <sighs> question, but does anyone remember what happened upstairs? Uh 
I don't think anything happened upstairs. I th- we're staying in one spot for too long. I don't know. And Lily says, yeah, what do you mean what happened upstairs? Something definitely happened. Look at my blade. This uh, tar or something is on it. Yeah, what did you do to that? What do you mean, what did I do? Where do you think I got tar from? Yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Well, that... Some, something happened. Some, something um, put tar on this blade. Maybe maybe these villagers are getting up to some weird... Just some weird shit. I don't know. Why would you have to drag your blade all over it? What? what? I didn't. We were inside a building. Um, I think Gerald is the one to speak up, and he kind of steps forward and puts a, a hand on Thoth's shoulder and says, No, I I agree. I, I believe something happened up there. I do not know, but there was the time when we were all holding our weapons. Right. And then we just put them away, and I don't know why we were holding them, and I can't help but think that this is, that something happened to us. Something must have happened that would cause us to draw them. Maybe the, maybe the creature made itself aware to us somehow. And I, I think it's Alexander that speaks up and nods, and he says, I think that's exactly what happened. I think, I believe that we, for some reason, for some amount of time, we became aware of this creature and suddenly we were not and this is concerning to me um for a lot of reasons actually thought is going to quickly check and make sure everyone is still there that no one is missing uh, how many people are you looking for? Well, uh, me, Lena. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're there. Um, Lena just talked. Right, except she was Alexander. Correct. Um, Nefmir. He just talked. Yeah. Gerald. He just talked. And Nell. And Lily. Lily also just talked. Nell hasn't said anything. Is she there? What? Do I see her? She is there. Okay. She is there. Okay. Um. As as Nefmir. Um. Nefmir turns to Gerald and and Nell. He's getting increasingly just kind of twitchy as he speaks. Uh. What what were you? folks told about that construction site at that intersection back there near the bar. You guys you guys passed that, right? Uh, yes. What, I think what do you know say. about it? This time Nell speaks up. She says, yes, um, we were told largely what Ronald what, what Ronald told you. Um, he told us that it was a construction site and we questioned him on the strange placement of it in the middle of the road and he said that he didn't know and that was that and when we questioned others in the town they either claimed that there was no hole or that it was a construction site or that it was the site of an accident that was being repaired or you know, any number of explanations and it was the same as same as all the other lies but 
perhaps not actually lies. I am coming to understand that these people all believed what they were telling us. I think we need to absolutely lay waste to this pit. I don't know. I just... I want it gone. That's all I know. <laughs> well, uh, we, we and, did and just like, read. And, like, Nefmir's, like, barely restraining himself from just, like, running apart from the group or, like, you know, trying to... You wouldn't get very far, naturally. In fact, you let's, together. <laughs> in fact, you know, let's do that. Like, Nefmir just, like, in the middle of this conversation, just kind of, like, bolts in the direction of the pit, but... Like, I'm assuming he's just going to, like, you know, get roped and just fall flat in his ass or something. How about you? I think Lily would be, like, ready to follow if you ran off, but I think... Uh, what would Thought do? I mean, I, I gotta be fighting against, like... I would ask I mean, why, like, where he's going. I mean, I do, I do just bolt, but, like, you know, I'm fighting against the weight of five other people, so... Yeah. I don't know if I just fall flat on my ass or, or what exactly. Well, that's what I'm trying to discern. Who Who is... Because, like I said, Lily would go with... Um, I'm not. I'm not leaving. Okay, so you would you would resist if Nefmir ran off? You would hold steady on the rope? Yeah. I'm, what is he doing? I'm not... We need to stay together. I'm not okay. going with him. Uh, but I'm not going to have any, any uh, strength contests here because it's... Uh, Lily's not like in it to win a tug of war situation. She was just ready to go along. So uh, when Nefmir tugs at the reins, uh, there are at least four other people who are not moving. So he just gets clotheslined around the waist, basically, and his legs go out from under him <laughs> and he hits the ground. <laughs> Where where are you going? That fucking hole. We need to seal that fucking hole. I I we just read about that upstairs. They said they they they, they were going to use it to stop the creature or something. I I don't think that's where it's coming from. Or what did they say? They said they were going to dig it out. That is what the the note said in the desk, right? That they were the, going to dig it. Yeah, dig something about digging out. Yeah. Yeah. Dig the bastard out. Dig the bastard out. Yeah. Uh, now that I know that they've made that very small excavation on purpose, I, I'm not so sure it's the creature. But no matter what, Nefmir, you, you can't go running off by yourself. Then you will disappear. What do you suggest we go buy some shovels? Let's go look for the shop. I suppose we could go digging in the ground, but uh, I don't know. And of course, we could try... We could try to press Ronald on this, now that we know he actually saw the mayor. And as Alexander pointed out, um, these memories are not being completely erased, so... I don't know. There's a chance we could get him to remember something that might help us. Uh, but uh, wasn't there somewhere I else? I... I don't remember last time. I think we were talking about different places we wanted to visit. And I think somebody said they wanted to visit um, a place. Did we did we grab this um, business journal with us or did we leave it behind? see i'm the one who the found light. it and then i presented it to everyone or at least shared the information but i'm not sure what he would have done with it of course like if we if, if, if you would have pocketed it then we could present this to ronald seeing as he was at the meeting oh shit or at yeah. least you know it was long that he was at the meeting anyway um i don't know i'm, I'm getting the sense that we just left it up there but well, if we I mean, did... you can say that you brought it with if you wanted to. Okay, yeah, let's just do that for expedience's sake. Fair enough. Okay. All right, we have it. We may now go to present it to um, him unless we... As you are discussing this, you all become very aware of a, an intense 
ringing in your ears. Ah, oh, shit. Louder now than before. And then, almost in unison, two screams. One of fear and one of pain, followed by metallic creaking. And when you turn to look, you see that face, huge, bigger than before. And you see Nell in its teeth. Oh, gross. No, don't let her get gut. Um, uh, smack it. Uh, go ahead and smack it. Uh, okay. Actually, you know what? Let's roll initiative for this one. Ow. I don't have a token. I can't do that. Um, just let's give me a second here. Uh, you know let's I want to some... push that button right now. Well, on purpose. Yeah, gonna... You know I want to do a... it. Give me a second for the token. All right, button. token. No token. You got a oh, map for it. You know I want to smash that button without clicking on the token first. So I'll I'll roll so I'm in the tracker, but I know I'm not. Hold on, there's no tracker either. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> there it is. Oh, it's okay, it we're there though. We're there. We're there. We're all there now. Where did those two come from? Yeah, they're not here. Those two, they are Gerald and Nell. Because I don't have tokens for them. Okay, mm. fair enough. <laughs> I don't have a battle map. I don't have tokens for them. There you go. Oh, my God. Uh, if, if you want to take a few moments to do some prep, I could use yeah, a book for the rest of Okay, all right, go ahead and do the two of us. Make it, make it good for us. Make it baby. Make it baby. What know. is what? What, what does is that what? mean? It, it baby. Make it baby. What does that mean? Make it baby. We're gonna make it baby. Like easy. Relax. Gonna Relax. Gonna We're gonna easy? make it baby. Okay. 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 Baby time. All right. Baby time. Yeah. All right. Can you chill? It's baby. I do not. Please know chill. What's it's happening. baby. I can't do that. Would you please chill? It's baby. Have you met? Throw me? a cheese slice on it. Oh, that was a, that was good. That was a what good was uh, callback. What was that? She said, "Throw a cheese slice on it." Oh, cheese! I heard cheek. Oh, I thought she was suggesting that you cut its cheek. No. 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 All right, I'm gonna do the P too. Oh Although my I god! Tim's there. Do the music. <laughs> <laughs>